This is a Chromebook, specifically my Chromebook from when I was in high school. Uh, these were given out to everyone and we got to keep them when we graduated. Now the issue with these Chromebooks is that they're really, really bad and nobody fucking wants them. In fact, people didn't want them so bad that I happily agreed to take them. And so I was thinking of what to do with these Chromebooks and th th this idea popped in my head. What if there was a way we could take all the Chromebooks and like just sort of combine them into one decent computer? Now, when I see these things are bad, I fucking mean it. It's running four gigs of RAM, a 16 gigabyte SSD, and a two core, two thread Celeron clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. Now, for reference, the Windows XP machine I have is running a Pentium 4 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. That CPU came out in 2002. Now, I know you're wondering, Avery, how are we gonna combine these computers into one big computer? I mean, this thing's so fucking garbage, I don't think you can even install anything on there. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. There's one operating system that actually you can install on pieces of shit. It's Linux. I know, I know, don't go, don't go. I, Linux is for fucking nerds, I know, but we're gonna need it to combine all these Chromebooks together. Now, the specific flavor of Linux we're gonna be installing is called Proxmox. Proxmox is a server software and the cool thing about Proxmox is that you can do what's called clustering. Now, clustering is when you have a bunch of computers, a bunch of similar computers, and you pool their resources. So, instead of having one computer with four gigs of RAM, I have four computers and they share 16 gigs of RAM. Now, this sounds great, but we need to actually get Linux on the Chromebook first, and believe it or not, uh, Google doesn't like that. Chrome OS is built off of Linux, so you can run Linux apps and there's a terminal, but we need to install our own operating system, and to do that, we have to be, uh, be a little nefarious. Now, lucky for me, I don't actually have to do any work. There's this really cool website called Mr. Chromebox that basically just tells you how to do it. So I'm just gonna follow a tutorial. So it looks like you can either dual boot Chrome and Linux, or just completely wipe the ROM and do Linux. I think we want to do completely wipe. Cool, all well, this verification is off. And I think that means we're in developer mode. All right, let's, let's disable the firmware write protection. I'm sure this is a very smart idea. Uh-huh, I don't really care how it works. I don't care, I don't care. How do I do it though? It disable the firmware write protection. And to do that you have to remove a screw, but it doesn't fucking tell you where the screw is. Fucking, there's a fucking timer here that tells you when you're allowed to go into developer mode. I don't know if you can see it. Just let me go there. Just let me go into fucking developer mode. Why does there have to be a fucking timer? All right, cool. I don't know why there's a fucking countdown, like it was a goddamn bomb. This thing's so fucking confusing. I know OS verification is off. How do I... Yes, I want to go into developer mode, actually. I feel like I should already be there. Am I going to fucking boot cycle five billion times? Or, or what? What are we doing? Alright, now we got to find the fucking magic screw. So, let's open this up. All right, cool. I didn't poke anything. I didn't want to poke. All right, that's the inside of a Chromebook. Now we just gotta find the right protection screw. Really, just showing a shot of the entire motherboard and not where I need to unscrew it. There we go. Oh, it's fucking labeled. All right, yeah. So, right protect screw is right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's labeled right protect. And don't need that anymore. Nice. All right, so we have an option to uh, write the whole ROM, which is what we want to do. So we're gonna hit two. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I don't care.
Alright, nice. So, I guess we just gotta go get a Proxmox USB now. So, actually, I think what I'm gonna do, um, because I have to go download Proxmox, um, for some reason I don't have the ISO anywhere. So, I'm gonna go ahead and flash the rest of these, and then we will install Proxmox. So we have our Proxmox ISO, but before we actually install it, we have to figure out how we're gonna network all these computers together. Now, the most convenient choice would be to use a USB to Ethernet adapter. I don't have four of those, but I mean, they can't be that expensive, right? So, change of plans. We're actually gonna use uh, Wi-Fi. I'm just gonna put a hotspot on my phone. And there we go, we have networking. So the cool thing about this script is that it's basically just like a regular computer now. So um, I'm gonna boot from the flash drive and we should be able to install Proxmox. So we're gonna go ahead and just install Proxmox. Less than 15 gigs. World's worst SSD. I swear to fucking God, dude. Like why even have it? So, uh, the install failed. Wanna know, you wanna know why? Could you, could you guess why the install failed? Uh, well, well. It's too fucking small, what the fuck? Now, we do have a trick up our sleeve. Um, all of these Chromebooks have a micro SD card slot, almost like they foresaw that 15 gigabytes wasn't gonna be enough <laughs> for most people. So, I just have, a micro SD card, and we'll see if we can boot off of that. So the micro SD card does show up in the target uh, menu, so that is a good sign. We are on the right track here. All right, so uh, let's see if it will actually install. Please. What the fuck? Could not be installed. Why? So uh, I looked up a uh, thread on the Proxmox forums and apparently if I add this dev MMC BLK something something to the install script it should be able to install to the stupid 16 gigabytes drive so I hope this works we are past we are past this fucking create uh, partitions I think I think we got it Let's fucking go. So we're in Proxmox, uh, and setting up Wi-Fi is something that they clearly don't want you to do. Um, I, there was an online tutorial for it, uh, and it's about a billion steps, and it's super fucking complicated. Uh, but basically the idea is that Proxmox does not come with the requisite software to network over Wi-Fi, so you have to go ahead and configure a bunch of custom shit. Um, so I think actually it doesn't even have the requisite software to drive your Wi-Fi adapter. So you have to install something called um, it's WPA Supplicant, and it's funny. Usually you have to install that over the internet. Uh, you don't have internet because I don't have a network adapter for this. So I had to put it on a USB drive, the dev files, and install it manually. And then you had to create like. Uh, WPA supplicant service. Let me. So, um, you had to go ahead and create this service for WPA supplicant so it'll actually run. And then you have to go into the network settings. So, you have to do all this stuff. Uh, I think what this is doing is it's creating a virtual network on this subnet, uh, 192.168.3.0. Um, why is there two slash 24s there? That shouldn't be there. Um, and then it like, that's how you do your VMs, I think. Because usually you can't do that over Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi cards are like super limited, I guess. Um, and you have another one up here, which I don't know what that does, but yeah. And then that's up there is the gateway and address for the actual hotspot that I'm running off of. So now that we have Wi-Fi figured out, uh, we get to do this on all four. So, so fun. So we have our 
fleet of Chromebooks here. They've all been flashed with Proxmox and set up with Wi-Fi. But right now, these are all acting as their own individual servers, and we want them to uh, pool all the resources and become one big, big in quotations, uh, awesome server. So we have to go into Proxmox and actually configure all of these nodes to become a cluster. So here we are in Proxmox. We're in the web interface. You can see I have my four nodes here. This is the first Dell, second Dell, first HP, and the second HP. And so what we want to do is we want to configure these as a cluster. Did not mean to do that. So I've actually never done this before, but I imagine you just go to cluster, create cluster. I'll call it um, Chromebook. And then I don't know what this does, but we'll do it over this. We'll do it over the pot spot. Sure, create it. And I think we're good. Yeah. All right, so I think we want our join info here. And oh, let me just button to copy it. So we're going to copy the join info. And then if we go down to Dell 2, we'll join and do that. And then type in our root password. And we should be able to join. I imagine it's very slow because this is. As a reminder, we're doing this over fucking um, a hotspot Wi Fi. Oh, that doesn't look good. Connection error? Why, why are we getting. Why is there a connection error? That makes no sense. I feel like these are all connected to the same network. So it shows up here. It's showing up on on this screen. But it's telling me there's a connection error here. I'm just going to go uh, have everyone else join it and we'll see if they also get an error. So it looks like these are all getting connection errors. I'm not sure why. Oh, well this one's also a connection error, so. Did my hotspot go down? No, my hotspot is very much still up. So maybe networking four computers off of one phone is causing a uh, just a few issues here. <laughs> All right, we're in here and, ah, wonderful. All right. So we have all of our nodes here. If I get a summary. Should wait for this. Yeah, so you can see here, we have combined 55 gigs of storage, combined 15 gigs of RAM, and eight CPUs. So, awesome. So we have a, we have a cluster. So having all these Chromebooks networked together is cool, but what can we actually do with it? Well, one idea I had was to use the micro SD card slot and some micro SD cards to create some high availability storage. The idea of high availability storage is that instead of having one computer with a bunch of drives in it, you have multiple computers with your drives spread out across them. So if one computer goes down, then you can still access your storage. So to do this, we just have to go into Ceph and then OSD, and we have to create one, and... Oh. Yeah, so Proxmox really fucking hates micro SD cards, and they don't let you use them. So let's try some flash drives and see if that works. So plugging in the USB drive, you can see that it does show up on our disks, which is nice. So if we go to create an OSD, we can use SDA, that, and create. I reload you, there we go. All right. So I went ahead and configured the rest of them. And as you can see here, uh, we have 234 gigs total, all on <laughs> flash drives. And actually I managed to um, use one of the SD cards. I think it's HP One. Uh, this is actually an SD card plugged into a USB adapter. And it let you do that so now we have our Ceph storage here so we have this shared high availability storage that so like if one uh, computer goes down the rest of them still have the rest of that storage to work with and it's all shared between them which is really cool now should you ever do this probably not unless you're in a situation like me where you have access to a bunch of free Chromebooks then this is kind of a waste of time and money. Um, 
for like 60 bucks, which is what one of these goes for on like Amazon or eBay, you can get yourself a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Pi 5 with 4 gigs of RAM will run you about 60 bucks. And Pis, they come with a NIC. They are tiny. They run off USB-C power. They run off very little power, especially if you're not like using all of these ports, if you're just running like very lightweight stuff. Uh, the BIOS isn't locked down. The Raspberry Pi devs actually want you to put Linux on it. This is a Pi 4, but my point still stands. But this was a pretty fun project. Um, I got to learn about how Proxmox worked. I never really used Proxmox before uh, doing this, so that was neat. And sort of learning about how clustering works was cool, but I would never ever want to do this on Chromebooks ever again. It's almost like Chromebooks are pieces of shit designed for small children. So I guess these Chromebooks are kind of useless to me now, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this screwdriver into the lithium battery and uh, start a toxic fire.